multi-protocol label switching and nothing but multi-protocol label switching. Let's begin. There are some absolutely amazing applications that work on top of an MPLS infrastructure like layer three VPNs and pseudo wires, but I'd like to clear those away for this nugget so you and I can take a look at just MPLS by itself. What exactly is it? What does it do? And how do we verify it's working? MPLS is nothing more than a packet forwarding technology that instead of using, for example, IP addresses and layer three information to make forwarding decisions, it uses something called a label that is attached to every single packet. And that label forwarding based on a label instead of the IP address took a lot less resources back in the old days. And that's why we used it back in the old days was because it was faster. Now today, we don't get that much of a speed improvement by forwarding based on a label versus the actual IP packet header information. However, there are some amazing additional applications that we can use because of the MPLS, like layer three VPNs and pseudo wire. Let's take a look at the rules for what each router has to follow to make this happen to do label switching instead of IP forwarding on a packet by packet basis. So for this discussion, I want you to pretend that you and I are this router right here, we're P5. The first rule is we need to assign labels. That means we need to take all the routes in our routing table and assign a number to them. And we can start at 16 and we can go into the tens of thousands. So take any number you want that's not used and assign a label. That's the first goal. Let's focus on just one network as opposed to all the routes in the routing table. And let's assume that P4, P5, P6, and PE2 have all assigned local labels to this one specific network. Now at this point, they're just following the rules and that is to assign a label, a number, to each and every route in the routing table. And for demonstration purposes, P4 chose 400, P5 chose 500, P6 chose 600, and PE2 chose the number 200 regarding this specific network. The second rule that we're gonna follow is we're gonna share those labels using something called label distribution protocol. And when MPLS is enabled on the interfaces and in global config, the label distribution protocol happens automatically. And it goes something like this. P4 is so proud that he has this label associated with the network 1111 that he advertised that information. So P5, that's us. We hear this advertisement and we say, okay, thanks Mr. P4, we get it. For this network 1111, your local label is 400 and we'll store that as a remote binding, remembering that P4's local label for this network is 400. That same process happens all the way across the network and we're gonna advertise it in both directions. It's like we can't help ourselves. So P4 is gonna tell them this way, P5 is gonna advertise it both ways, P6 is gonna advertise it. Eventually, everybody is gonna know their neighbors' labels for all of the routes in their routing table. The next rule is to build a label-based forwarding table. And we have a problem, and this is us, you and I are P5. Our challenge is this, we've got P4 who's advertised regarding this network right here, just the 1111 network. He's advertising a label of 400 that he can reach it. We also have P6 who's advertising a label of 600 that P6 can reach it. Who do we believe? Which one of those are we gonna put in a label forwarding table regarding this network? And the answer is simple. We consult our unicast routing table for IP version four. We take a look at the 111 network. It's gonna be in our routing table, hopefully. And we're gonna identify what the next top is. And then we're gonna to say to both of our neighbors, dear Mr. P4, dear Mrs. P6, I know you all both are advertising labels, but I looked at my unicast routing table and the next top from a unicast routing perspective is owned by P4. That means that P4 is the best decision. So for that reason, in my forwarding database based on labels, I'm gonna know that to get to the 111 network, I'm gonna go ahead and forward it directly to P4 and I'm also gonna put a label on that packet and I'm going to include an MPLS label of 400 because that way when P4 receives it, P4 is the one who told me that that was his label for the 111 network and it can continue to be forwarded. So once MPLS has been implemented on top of an IP version four working network, every router is gonna know the label forwarding information. PE2 is gonna think, oh, I need to forward it up to P6 and I need to impose label 600 on it. When P6 gets that label 600, it already knows that it needs to forward it to P5 with label 500. When P5 gets that labeled incoming packet with MPLS label 500, it swaps it out and puts 400 and that's the label swapping process that each of these devices are going to use. The very first, the entire process of calculating which of my neighbor's label advertisements is the best for a given network happens very, very quickly. And it happens before the first transit packet ever shows up. 
The final rule with MPLS is use it. Use the label forwarding whenever you can. So if there's a ping packet, for example, destined to 1111 that's sent into PE2, he's going to look at his forwarding information and see that there's an advertised label of 600 that P6 has shown to him for that network. He's going to impose label 600 and then P6 will swap it with 500 and he'll swap that out with 400 as this packet is label switched across the entire network. To verify the labels, we can use a simple trace route on an iOS router and trace all the way from PE2 over to 1.1.1.1 and it'll actually show us the actual labels that are being imposed on the network. So this one right here is being imposed by PE2 and that's because that's the label that P6 advertised to him. Then P6 swaps out the 600 with a 500 as before it sends it to P5. P5 swaps out the 500 with a 400 as it sends it to P4 because that's the label that P4 advertised. And then for the last one, it does something really cool called a penultimate hot pop, which you can come see me in the CBT Nugget series. And I'll tell you all about that and much, much more. If we were to do packet analysis of that packet right after it left the PE2 device before it hit P6, we would see there's the layer two, there's the IP header at layer three, and this is the MPLS. And this is like what I call layer 2.5. This is the extra information that's added to a packet. It's 32 bits, this much right here. And here's the label that PE2 is imposing on this packet for the benefit of being received by P6. P6 will receive that, know exactly how to forward it. It'll swap the label with 500 for P5 and forward it on its way. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at MPLS, which is a packet forwarding technology, which makes forwarding decisions based on labels inside the MPLS headers instead of the layer three IP headers. I hope this information has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.